लेडीज एंड जेंटलमैन गुड डे एंड वेलकम टू अमारा राजा एनर्जी एंड मोबिलिटी लिमिटेड क्यू थ्री एफ फाइव ट्वेंटी फोर अर्निंग कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल एज अ रिमाइंडर ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट लाइन विल बी इन लिसन ओनली मोड एंड देर विल बी इन अपॉर्चुनिटी फॉर यू टू आस्क क्वेश्चन आफ्टर द प्रेजेंटेशन कंक्लूड शुड यू नीड असिस्टेंट ड्यूरिंग द कॉन्फ्रेंस कॉल प्लीज सिग्नल एन ऑपरेटर बाई प्रेसिंग स्टार टेन जीरो ऑन योर टच टोन फोन Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ambar Shukla from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Thank you and over to you sir. Thank you. On behalf of Motilal Oswal, I would like to welcome you all to the Q3 FY24 earnings call of Amara Raja Energy and Mobility Limited. Uh, let me introduce you to the management participating with us on today's earnings call and hand it over to them for the opening remarks. We have with us Mr. Daily Babu, Chief Financial Officer. Without any further delay, I request Mr. Babu to start with his opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, Ambar. Good afternoon to all of you who have joined this call. Thanks for coming in. Uh, during the current quarter, the consolidated revenue growth was uh, around 15% on YOY basis. This has come on the back of the lead acid battery revenue grow, growing by about uh, 12%, while the new energy business has doubled its revenue compared to the previous year. Uh, the lead acid battery business, uh, the revenue growth is on the back of the volume growth in four wheelers, <coughs> uh, both in the aftermarket segment uh, and the two wheeler aftermarket segment as well. Uh, we have seen a volume growth robust volume growth four wheeler aftermarket grew at about 11% whereas the two wheeler aftermarket grew around 15% during the current quarter while the oem four wheeler uh, there was a very marginal growth of about 2% the two wheeler oem growth was around uh, 30% while the other applications in terms of the home ups batteries the growth was stagnant Uh, because we have been meeting the requirement through the trading route uh, since we don't have the manufacturing facility as yet uh, on the industrial battery side uh, the overall volume growth was around 6 to 7% uh, most of the segments grew around the same level while we have seen some strong growth in the telecom segment which was about 2% higher than the average the four wheeler exports also have registered as uh, robust growth this quarter about 25% in the volume growth on the international business side we have just commenced shipments to the uh, north american geography uh, while the revenue for these uh, exports uh, is recognized on delivery basis uh, the commencement of containments has started during the quarter uh, <clears throat> the on the margin side in the lead acid battery business the lead base was around uh, 2 lakh rupees which was almost 8 9% higher compared to the previous year same time but on the back of this volume growth uh, while when we look at the higher lead base the ebitda margin will show uh, uh, compared to the previous year there is a, a reduction that is completely because of the higher lead base uh, and also during the current quarter we had a trading revenue of about 7% because we are now trading on the tubular batteries uh so on a by tv basis the margins are cumulatively better than the previous year and for the current quarter considering the higher lead base there is reduction in the overall uh, operating margin but on a quarter on quarter basis the margins are showing the uh, increasing trajectory <clears throat> on the new energy business uh, the revenue during the period has doubled and uh, about 80% of the revenue is coming from the battery packs that we are selling to three wheelers and two wheelers and we have in this quarter have commenced battery pack deliveries for uh, the telecom sector and some other uh, industrial power back up uh, storage requirements as well so we are producing chargers uh, for the three wheeler and two wheelers which we are supplying to the oems like piagio and mahindra and mahindra uh, and <coughs> the as far as uh, the other uh, updates for the quarter is concerned uh, the tubular battery factory reinstatement is in uh, progress and we expect the plant to be ready for the season uh, of 2025 and in the new energy business uh, the uh, 
Dibitipalli location where we are setting up our Giga corridor. Currently, the land development and the design works are in progress. We expect uh, that the operations in the Giga corridor will start uh, as uh, any such earlier during FI26. Uh, this is the brief on the operations. Uh, I'll now uh, request any questions uh, that can be taken up. Uh, uh, before that, uh, maybe uh, let me also give one update uh, that the integration of plastic component business that was purchased from uh, Mangal Industries uh, is also complete. We received all the required approvals uh, from the NCLT and other uh, stakeholders. The uh, effective date uh, for this merger will be 1st February 2024. So we will be completing the restatement of the financials and that information will be available to you as part of our annual accounts. Uh, over to you for questions. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the touch tone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomura. Please go ahead. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question was on new energy business. Uh, could you uh, tell us who are the leading customers for the, the battery pack business? for two-wheelers and three-wheelers, and also are we looking at other segments like uh, four-wheelers uh, for either battery packs or chargers? Uh, is there some product development or likelihood of revenues from that segment as well? Yeah, see, currently, as uh, I have said in the opening remarks, currently the major customers are uh, Mahindra and the Piaggio. On the two-wheeler side, we are uh, having some customer accounts at the uh, uh, we have just commenced some of the consignments to the new customers. The volumes on the two-wheeler size are still low. As far as uh, other segments are concerned, uh, we have also started uh, supplying uh, some battery packs to BSNL uh, as part of their tender requirement. And also, we will be commencing uh, the battery pack sales to the telecom, uh, other telecom tower companies during the coming quarter. Uh, as far as product development roadmap is concerned, yes, we are looking at developing charges as well as battery packs at a higher voltage requirements as well, which will be suitable for uh, four-wheeler requirements, but I think that will take some more time before we put up those products uh, <clears throat> being available to the market. Okay. And sir, these uh, orders which are coming from telecom segment, are they... Uh, replacing uh, the lead acid batteries or uh, uh, they are incremental? It, it's, it's actually both. Uh, in some of the small cell towers, they are using uh, the uh, uh, lithium packs and they have also started now looking at replacing the lithium battery packs in uh, some of the base tower stations itself where the uh, backup requirements are suiting the lithium requirements, uh, lithium technology characteristics. But I think over a period of time, if the lithium prices were to continue to fall the way that they have been doing in the last six, seven months, yes, they may consider uh, a larger migration as well to the newer industry. Understood. And uh, sir, we have also mentioned uh, entry into the North American market. This is for which product and what is the scale of order book that we have mentioned? Uh, this is uh, for the four-wheeler AGM batteries that we are manufacturing. While I will not be able to share the uh, uh, numbers on the order book and all because there is no such concept of order book. These are basically uh, purchase uh, contracts that will come in based on the requirements of the large retail chains that are there in that country. Uh, we have uh, commenced the, the, they are reasonably uh, sizable opportunity. So hopefully they will gain more traction in the coming quarter. Okay, because the press release actually mentions we have a substantial order book. So that's why I was checking. Yes, we do. Uh, we do. But uh, these are order books uh, that that, are, that will come as part of the long-term uh, contracts, which are uh, uh, changeable based on the market conditions over there. You know the size of the market over there. So naturally, these are sizable orders. But uh, uh, in terms of numbers, I wouldn't want to delve into the details here. 
sure sir sure i'll call come back in the queue thanks thank you next question is from the line of raghunandan nl from the vama research please go ahead thank you sir for the opportunity uh, sir couple of uh, clarification before i get into questions uh firstly uh, given that uh, near term some uh, pressures on the cost uh, have we taken any price hikes in january february to offset that no uh, we have not taken any price hikes uh, at it because these levels of current lead levels has been there for the last uh, uh, um, almost during the current year lead always been hovering at this level so i don't think we have taken any uh, price correction except for in case of b2b cases where the passing on will happen got it because uh, uh, you know your competitor has taken uh, on the volume side sir of for inverter how was the performance why 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 there was no growth uh, we have just done whatever we have done in the last year got it uh sir so coming to my question uh one on capex and investments uh how much do you expect uh, for, for fi24 and 25 uh, both on the lead acid battery capex and uh, new energy investments uh my second question was on the uh, lithium project which is progressing uh, as per plan uh so for this project uh, you know uh, if you can give some color how you are seeing traction with customers how do you see the roe uh, over a 2 3 year period assuming the ramp up happens to 70 80% can you see roe of 15% and and uh, will there be any support because of the pli scheme where the rebidding has started uh, so so you know would that also help your uh, would those incentives help your profitability there Uh, yeah see as far as new energy is concerned currently uh, as we, we have mentioned in the earlier calls as well about these three projects one is uh, putting increasing our pack capacity as such uh, current capacity is about 500 megawatt hour would like to ramp it up to uh, 2 gigawatt hour over a period of time and uh, the second uh, project is about the customer qualification plan the work of that has commenced and then we have ordered the required equipment which is more for testing the products and then getting it homologated with uh, the OEs and the third project is about the uh, uh, e positive labs which is basically a research institution that we are building and as far as the initial 2 gigawatt hour uh, plant is concerned uh, uh, that is something that uh, we said will be operational sometime in fi26 Uh, as of now when we look at the return ratios considering the current uh, pricing levels and also the equipment uh, capex levels we still believe at the ebitda level around 10 11% is possible but when we look at the roe considering the asset turnover ratio and also uh, uh, the current sale price levels uh, still it will be uh, very difficult for me to put a number but uh, at this point of time we are reasonably confident that return on equity could be uh, in the similar range of uh, 10 11% but these numbers as i told you can only be uh, taken on their face value until we achieve a given scale any sub scale operation uh, in the cell manufacturing will not be the right time for us to really measure the return on equity 8 9 gigawatt hour scale when we are running at the cell level is when i think we should really look at what return possibilities are coming up now as far as uh, your first question was uh, uh, capex, and capex and investment is concerned i think current year we will be closing with a overall investment of about uh, uh, 250 odd crores in the lead acid business and uh, around uh, 250 odd to 300 crores between the lead recycling plant as well as the uh, new energy business i think next year we will have a, um, at least about uh, 600 crores of capex coming in which may be predominantly focused around the uh, new energy business got it so so in stand alone operations generally what we do that 400 crore kind of capex uh, that would continue as a uh, for lead plus lead recycling and then the new energy would further take additional investments uh, because that 1500 crores which you are investing in giga corridor 
that that is what you are saying right that this year 200 to 300 crore and next year maybe 500 to 600 crore see the overall capex for lead acid business because we are pushing the most of the investment on the recycling plant uh, might get completed by end of this fiscal or maybe the first quarter of next year so the overall lead acid capex may be in the range of 250 to 300 only for next year and uh, another 300 to 400 crores will be required for the new energy business uh, for the equipment that will that might get delivered in the uh, next year so the numbers may change by about a margin of 50 crores here and there depending on how the project progresses got it sir and the, the question i asked on pli scheme and uh, whether you will be participating and whether the conditions for the scheme is same this time compared to the last time yeah there were only few changes that they have done they are, they, they are not many and i don't think they are uh, very seriously material i think the product characteristics the uh, uh, value addition requirements within india and also the ramp up requirements are more or less the same and even the subsidy amount is the same uh, i think we should uh, be able to participate in this tender uh, as well uh, while this is only for a 10 gigawatt hour tender that the government has launched i think we will be able to participate in this as well in this uh but obviously uh, uh, i mean the overall story around the new energy i don't think there will be any rethinking uh, whether we qualify for pli or not and just to uh, wishing you all the best and thank you so much very useful thank thank you ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the conference please limit your question to only two question per participant next question is from the line of jignesh gandhi from ambed capital please go ahead uh, hi i am mr babu uh, congress on good numbers uh, quickly uh, one is the discussion on the cell level ebitda which you mentioned uh, you are expecting about 10 to 11% ebitda margin uh, based on current pricing for uh, cell manufacturing operations or uh, you are referring to 10 to 11% ROE See, at a level of 7 to 9 gigawatt hour scale is what i am saying that saying that operating margin genesh because anything less than a 3 2 3 gigawatt hour definitely you will not be able to hit those numbers you need scale for hitting a 10 to 11% ebitda margin uh, okay. and the roi requirements based on the current capex rough estimate suggests that it may be around uh, that lower double digits but if the capex costs were to come down then maybe uh, situation might improve but uh, we have seen the kilowatt hour uh, sale prices also coming down quite drastically uh, in the last 2 3 days owing to the lithium carbonate prices coming down and also the capacity utilization elsewhere is uh, not uh, uh, full so there is uh, definitely a tendency to uh, uh, i mean use capacities and then sell at lower prices while this i believe would be more of a temporary blip i think we will see again the prices climbing once uh, the demand increases uh, and uh, uh, anything around 80 90 dollar per kilowatt hour is a reasonable sale price to expect otherwise the unit economics will be very difficult to manage uh, but even if we look at the current prices level i still believe because this is more driven by the material costs that are reduced i think i still believe the operating margin wise still 10 11% is possible but as i said all these are estimations at a given scale they cannot be done at a sub scale operation right right got it uh, and a uh, couple of questions one is uh, on the standalone revenue we have seen about 9% growth in this quarter uh, whereas we are referring to about 12% top growth in the uh, uh, lead asset business at console level so the gap is due to the price pass through which would be there in b2b business is that the right understanding no when you look at the stand alone statements last year same quarter there was a lithium battery revenue as well okay. so if okay. i Go take ahead. out that revenue and then purely look at the lead acid battery revenue you will see that in the uh, segment uh, financials that we have given where the revenue for lead acid batteries last year was about 2570 crores which has grown to 2896 uh, uh, crores this quarter 
Okay, got it. And on the net uh, prices side, uh, so are we seeing further inflation from what uh, what we have accounted for in Q2 because that's what LME prices are suggesting. Uh, and any uh, in that context, any thoughts on uh, price increases in the replacement market? So I I don't think. See, let us hovering between 2050 to 2150. That is the range that we are seeing at least for the last uh, four to five months. Uh, given this range and the price levels where we are, I don't think there is a uh, serious correction required on the pricing. But if led were to continue to remain at the levels of 2150 and 2200, then maybe yes, there may be a need for a price correction. But otherwise, if it oscillates between these levels, I think uh, uh, we are fairly uh, priced is what I believe. Uh, got it. Uh, great. Thanks and all the rest. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Vibhay Jutsi from JP Morgan. Please go ahead. Uh, yes, hello, sir. Thanks for taking my questions. Uh, my first question is on the new energy business and, you know, particularly what's happening in China where, uh, you know, at least the LFT battery prices have come down to as low as, you know, $50 per kilowatt hour. Now, obviously, you know, it's it's a very early days, but just, you know, the facts to mention that an 11% EBITDA margins are possible. Uh, so, uh, you know, uh, uh, on one hand, you know, how should we think about it? Is it as, you know, battery prices come lower, is it an opportunity for you to cater more to, you know, uh, say, telecom applications and the volume can go higher? Or is it, uh, you know, that pricing, uh, you know, can, uh, you know, can be under some sort of pressure. So, you know, how are you thinking about this, this situation? Yeah, you are right. See, if per kilowatt hour price of LFP were to come down to 50 levels, which at least the last price that I have seen in India is about uh, 60 to 65 dollars. But if it were to further come down, right now I am seeing two reasons why there is this pressure on the pricing. One is there is uh, the inherent competition within the Chinese market and also the material uh, prices, particularly on the lithium carbonate, PDA, it has come down, are two contributing reasons for this kind of a price drop. And uh, when we look at the financials of those companies as well, only large sized capacity, large sized companies are able to operate around 8-9% kind of a margin, whereas smaller companies are finding it to uh, achieve even a 5% debit margin. So, I don't think this level of pricing can continue forever and then uh, uh, the projects be viable because the capital intensity of this business is quite high. So, if operating margins of 4-5% or even 6-7% are not sustainable from a uh, business uh, scale point of view. So, at some point of time, these prices have to revert back it cannot continue uh, like this is what at least my reading is. I may be proven wrong because the similar pricing tendency is happening even elsewhere like solar cell prices also. So now when we look at the Indian cost structure, I think after whatever the understanding that I have, I think on conversion cost side, I think we have, uh, I would say, uh, there is a reasonable possibility that we may not be costlier compared to uh, any other uh, manufacturer in the world. Uh, while on the material cost side, yes, the Chinese ecosystem will definitely give some advantage to them. Now, how much is that advantage? At this time, we believe there could be a 15% on the material cost advantage that may be there for the Chinese companies. That is something that we need to deal with as we move into this uh, business, particularly on the sell side. On the pack side, I think it is it is fairly a, a, a known story because you simply assemble the packs and then the, it is about the BMS and uh, the other thermal management systems. That is what is the value driver there. But on the sell price, uh, I, I think conversion cost side, we are reasonably good. Material cost advantage is something, it will take some more time for the Indian ecosystem to really uh, fill in and it's going to be a long haul. Hmm. Got it. Got it. No, that's very helpful. Thanks for the detailed color. And, you know, just as a follow up, uh, you know, what we are seeing is that there could be, you know, uh, 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 you know, a massive 
over capacity kind of situation coming in the next couple of years globally as far as the manufacturing capacity is concerned so do you see any risk of say you know dumping of these cells uh, you know uh, on 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 india and you know which might result in this kind of a situation or or you know um, given the fact that you mentioned that we'll be okay from a conversion cost point of view uh, i mean still it's not going to be that big of a threat any any thoughts on that yeah see i think as we speak also it's happening it's not that it is not happening because 3 year 3 months ago or 4 months ago if you observe the kilowatt hour prices were somewhere close to 100 so i am sure that pricing pressure is definitely acting on uh, players who have excess capacity and they are definitely trying to find uh sources where they can dump the material as much as possible uh like i said the material cost side advantages what the chinese ecosystem has yes definitely it will be a challenge for the indian ecosystem to meet it but uh that is something an industry issue now it is not specific to any one any one particular company but if you talk about the world capacities yes as, as we speak if the penetration levels uh what uh, what to become only 30 35 or not beyond that on the four wheeler side then i think yes uh, people will feel this higher capacity burden for a long time to come so unless the penetration levels on the evs four wheelers were to drastically increase to at least 50% uh, then i think some respite will be there for the capacity utilization uh, and this may also result in some level of uh, consolidation where the excess uh, capacities are there uh, but yes it is definitely a new thing that has emerged in the last 3 4 months and then we need to be wary about how we invest capital behind it and then be careful that uh, we are not burning too much cash uh, without understanding the operational dynamics of it i think we are we are closely looking at the situation then we'll Uh, calibrate our plans depending on how this pricing situation emerges next question is from the line of mukesh sara from avindas park please go ahead yes sir good evening and uh, thank you for the opportunity <coughs> my uh, first question is uh, again just on the numbers first up is uh, the other expenses i think last couple of quarters you were mentioning certain one offs with respect to uh, higher insurance charges and uh, consultancy charges power cost etc uh other expenses continue to go up uh, qq so uh, are we still incurring some of these costs sir? uh yes mukesh uh, the insurance cost is a per annum cost uh, that has uh, increased so every quarter we have a 10 crore burden coming up uh, uh, on a quarter on quarter basis so if that if we look at it that way uh, uh, there is that burden that is still there and we are also working on certain uh, 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 projects to enhance the internal efficiencies where we are spending some money on the consultancy i think that should give us the operational efficiency in the coming quarters uh, those two one offs are still there in this quarter also and i think uh, um, the the efficiency results some of them may flow in q4 and then balance in the next year okay okay got that <clears throat> and uh, secondly on the new energy business uh, currently on the uh, battery side i think you mentioned 80% of that revenue that we see is battery uh, back we are seeing the margins improve there uh, so uh, i mean uh, what's the driver for that uh, uh, what kind of utilization rates we are at of that 500 megawatt uh, capacity that we have right now on the sm yeah see the profitability driver is less dependent on uh, the total capacity utilization because generally the pack is not a very capital intensive uh, uh, process but uh, we have seen uh, considering the volume what we have sold there is some bit of material cost advantage we had and also uh, the overall process efficiency also has helped in a bit of uh, better margins than uh, and as we increase the scale scale some of the fixed costs we have in that business also is actually uh, getting absorbed on a larger volume so beyond the scale and some bit of material cost advantage uh, there are no other factors which are uh, giving that efficiency so uh, <clears throat> or or uh, i mean if i look at the other way what kind of revenues we can do with our current assembly uh, capacities say uh, this coming year at 25 uh, until obviously the cell manufacturing will start beyond that so uh, what can we do on this business 
See, the current run rate, I mean, obviously, the revenue size will also depend on, on uh, where the battery pricing is because, again, 70% yeah, of yeah. the pack is true. So, the current run rate of uh, 150 crores can be easily sustained with the existing process and it can even be stretched to about 200 crores. So, I think with the current capacities, what we have, uh, 200 crore revenue is possible. Got that, got that. And just lastly, uh, the recycling plant, I think you mentioned from first quarter, it can start operations for us. Uh, is that correct? Yes, next year, first quarter is where we are expecting the uh, operations to commence. Okay, and will this uh, largely replace a third party source right now, or will we start using a lot more recycling? Okay, I think, uh, uh, we have been increasing the recycle lead portion. Uh, uh, depending on uh, uh, sources available for a very long time. You know, we have reduced our import content quite drastically. So, the uh, BMHR or BWMR rule compliance, whatever crap we are procuring, I think uh, that might get processed in this uh, facility itself. Uh, okay. So, that way, the proportion of the secondary lead vis-a-vis the primary lead will not alter just because this facility has come up. But some of the facilities that we are depending on third parties might come down, but it will not completely uh, eliminate the third party dependence. Got it. Got it. Uh, great. So thank you. I'll get back. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Manan Chaha from Electron PMS. Please go ahead. Yes, sir. You are okay. Uh, just a clarification regarding our lithium ion cell manufacturing of 2 gigawatt plant. So, are you going to manufacture NMC batteries or LFP or both? Yeah, to start with, I think NMC will be the first chemistry, but uh, soon after that, we should also get into LFP because in the long term, we believe LFP will be the dominant chemistry. That's what we have said even in our uh, earlier calls. We believe 60% of the market will be requiring LFP and the balance only might be uh, the NMC and other chemistries. Okay, and... Have we collaborated with any MNCs for technical know-how? No, at this point of time, I don't think I have any update on that front of technology collaboration. There are certain efforts that are happening internally and we are also working with certain other agencies. As of now, if you ask me whether we have a large technology partner for this business, no. Okay, okay. And last question is regarding our investment in log line batteries, where we own 15%. So, are we taking any technical know from there or if you could share, shed some light on what exactly is our relationship with them? Yeah, see, as a uh, startup, we made our investment. We are also working with them for certain uh, technology requirements that what we have. Uh, so, we, as we are only, uh, our intention of investing log nine was uh, definitely strategic. Uh, so, at this point of time, beyond this, I don't think I have any other details to share. Okay, okay. Got it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Abhishek from Dollar Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Sir, what was the new energy business revenue in 9 months FY25? What was the new energy business? How much was the new energy business uh, revenue in 9 months FY25? About 400 crores. And uh, what is your target for the next year? No, I don't think we have been talking about any uh, uh, targets uh, in these calls. Uh. Okay. And uh, as uh, as you are looking to add many products to leverage your distribution network, like you added lubricants, now also uh, you are looking to install uh, solar panel uh, uh, installations. Uh, so just wanted to understand uh, what are your plans to just uh, improve your uh, revenue from your distribution network? See, uh, uh, as a matter of leveraging the channel assets, yes, you are right that we have launched our loops business. I think the All India rollout is just being uh, uh, concluded. So I think it will gain some traction uh, in the coming quarters. Uh, as far as solar panel business, along with the uh, batteries is concerned, we look at uh, home energy as one piece. Uh, which could be a backup storage, which could be a solar panel uh, requirement. Uh, so there are uh, multiple ways to approach this entire home energy business. Right now, the uh, concept around this business is getting developed. So in the future, uh, as we see uh, the opportunity, either 
a battery agnostic solution can be developed around the, uh, the home energy requirement, both for backup as well as solar. So, as and when we launch those businesses, we'll update you as to uh, what is the business case about. Thank you, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Kapil Singh from Nomura. Please go ahead. Sir, you mentioned that there was 30% growth in tubular OEMs. Uh, can you just uh, give some color, like what was the driver? Is there some new customer that has ramped up there? No, I, I think the customer portfolio-wise is the same. It's only that value volume growth was uh, higher during the current quarter couple. So, this is just uh, market uh, growth mainly. Yeah, it's, it's more of uh, the volume growth that we have seen in the uh, OEMs. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, thanks. Uh, that's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikash from Econ Trade. Please go ahead. This Mangal industry actually merger side is there. Hello? Yeah, uh, that that's getting concluded now. I think uh, we'll be completing that merger in the current quarter. Okay, and the shopping ratio is the same, whatever the upload, on this one is there at the time of merger documents. Absolutely, yes, yes. Uh, and uh, at the time you uh, mentioned this one is there, it's a, after this merger, it's a bit of margin is improvement is there, 0.75 to 1%. Whether it's reflect in the next, next year? Yeah, once we reset the financials, I think uh, we will be able to comment on those things. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from the line of Sanjay Sadpati from Upper Sant. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Um, uh, just a uh, uh, clarification. Uh, you know, this new, uh, this inverter battery factory, when is it likely to come up, sir? We'll be in, uh, uh, using that factory for the FI, uh, the calendar year 25 season, it should be available. We are expecting to commence the commercial production sometime in Feb 2025 or March 2025. Okay, okay. Until that time, you will be doing this trading for that business? Yes, you are right. And uh, as far as uh, your electric vehicle battery, lithium-ion battery is concerned, sir, can, can you just give us some uh, progress in terms of when we did like you to start commercial production? As I mentioned earlier, our objective is to look at uh, starting the uh, commercial production in FI26 and I think uh, as of now there is no change in the plans. So unless uh, there are further things that uh, require more time or less time, we will come back to you as and when the, those uh, that understanding emerges. Understood. And the last thing if I can check, um, considering that your competition has taken price hike and uh, costs have gone up and you are not taking price hike. Uh, so, are you uh, are you likely to see continued margin pressure, or uh, you have something at your hand uh, that will help you to improve margin from where it is now? See, I think uh, considering the leg base and also once the tubular factory comes back, manufacturing revenue, if we can improve, yes, there is a possibility of improving the margins further. As far as rate hikes are concerned, I don't think we'll shy away from taking them once we see a stable lead price over and above what we are currently seeing because right now there is an oscillation happening in a $100 range. So when such oscillations happen, that's not the time we actually look at the price rise. But yes, if it sustains at a higher lead level, we will definitely consider the price hikes. Whereas in the B2B segment, it's an automatic pass-through that happens as and when the, there is a price change in the material. Understood. understood. Thanks a lot, sir. Question is from the line of Apurva Jain, an individual investor. Yeah. Yeah, sir. So, uh, I have two questions. So, the first question is regarding the uh, fungibility. So, uh, let's suppose, right now, as you said, that we would be having uh, two chemistries in our new energy uh, plant, right? Uh, so it would be LSP and NNC. I want to understand that in future, let's suppose a couple of uh, years afterwards, if some new chemistry comes into, for example, the sodium ion batteries which we are hearing, right? So, so would our the new uh, factory would be uh, fungible to 
to manufacture those uh, those batteries as well, or we have to do some another another um, uh, like capex for that that's required in the future. Yeah, that's a that's a good question. Uh, uh, actually, based on whatever understanding that we have so far, uh, the chemistry changes are not going to cause too much capital redundancy, whereas the form factor will change. That's our understanding as of now. So we believe even on the sodium side, at least some of the processes may not significantly change, but uh, some of the processes may undergo a change when it comes to sodium. uh battery chemistry coming up but we believe that capex fungibility or the change of equipment that is required to move into a different chemistry i don't think is going to be very significant but between nmc and lsp uh, chemistry changes uh, at this point of time we don't believe there is too much of capital penalty for us to change it's only that the change over times will be little longer so that's our understanding I wouldn't say we have uh, fully understood uh, this, but uh, I think we'll come back uh, once we understand further on uh, what are the equipment that is currently used. But we believe sodium ion for a commercial scale is still uh, some more time away, but we are keeping a close tab on it. Okay, and so my another question is regarding the uh, what is the revenue potential uh, for the phase one of the new gigawatt plant which we are aiming into, like which will be. I think uh, will be commercializing in F twenty six. See, uh, at the current price, the NMC pricing uh, is around let's say about sixty uh, uh, to seventy dollar per kilowatt hour, and then on a two gigawatt means it's two two million uh, kilowatt hours. So you can uh, see what's the math. Okay, and so actually I missed uh, in the initial. So what are what are the margins we are uh, we are estimating in this? in the new energy business plan as i have mentioned earlier also in the call i think the time for margins while we can we have done a lot of uh, scenario plan, scenario analysis we believe at a given scale a 10% operating margin is possible uh, but that will depend a lot will depend on how the material pricing will behave so if material pricing were to continuously come down and capital intensity were to remain at the same levels then i think even that will be a challenge but we believe at this point of time at a 8 to 9 gigawatt hour scale when we achieve is when we can see a operating margin level of around 10 11% okay and this my, my last question uh, how much uh, percentage of our revenue is uh, we sell to the after markets be it 2 billion 3 billion 4 billion Yeah, from a volume point of view, uh, I think uh, almost fifty uh, percent of our volumes are to aftermarket. Okay, thank you. That's it from our end. Yeah. Next question is from the line of Vibhav from J.P. Morgan. In this quarter, uh, and then the. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thanks for taking my follow up. Uh, just wanted some clarification on the deal merger process. Uh, you know, with Mangal Industry. So, uh, you said that the deal will get concluded in this quarter, and the finance, the, the updated financials will be provided then. In the in the annual accounts. Okay, but it will get completed uh, in this coming quarter. Yeah, yeah. Because first February is the uh, uh, closing date. Okay. Got it. Got it. uh and you know just uh, one last follow up uh, you know this uh, you know north american uh, exports that you have commenced you know how should we think about you know the export revenue potential because i think uh, last year uh, you know we saw some kind of a slow down because of the you know anti dumping duties but in general you know how much of a growth potential can you know these uh, the new uh, orders bring Yeah, the uh, as uh, I think we have articulated earlier, the idea is uh, considering the opportunities that will be available because of the consolidation that may happen in the lead asset market. There is a reasonable scope to grow around 15% kind of a number in terms of volumes, but uh, uh, that depends on enhancing the market share in the existing markets where we are operating and also getting into some of these newer markets. Uh, at this point of time uh, the agm battery supply is uh, definitely helping us ramp up some of these numbers we have to see how it unfolds as we move ahead got it thanks sir thank you ladies and gentlemen as that was the last question of the day 
I now hand the conference over to management for closing comments. Thank you everyone for joining and uh, we'll be happy to take your questions next part. Thank you. On behalf of Mutila Lospal Financial Services, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.